Be the Talk, Episode 258, featuring the unspeaker, Sally Zimney. Welcome to Be the Talk. We go behind the talk seven days a week for tips and techniques to help you change the world. I'm Nathan Eckel, and a talker myself, I'm interviewing others who change the world with their talk. You can too, even if you've never given a talk before. Let's get started with today's show. We are live with Sally Zimney. Sally, are you ready to talk? I'm so ready. Let's do this. Sally Woo. Zimney is a presentation coach, speaker, and host at This Moved Me, a podcast about the art of public speaking. Sally's mission, to create talks that move the world. Through Movers U, an online speaking platform, Sally helps thought leaders transform their approach to public speaking and move their audience. Sally Zimney, welcome to the talk. Thanks, Nathan. So happy to be here. Your talk is called Not a Speaker, Be an Unspeaker. And uh, yeah. what what is unspeaking all about? Well, it might look like this. You walk on stage for your talk, and I love it because I'm I'm hearing this disembodied voice, which is really coming through the loudspeaker. Obviously, you pre-recorded it, but we're, it took us, you know, some of us took uh, several seconds to figure out how you were able to do that, and uh, it's just another piece of unspeaking. And I think you demonstrated so well, what does it look like when you're not really present, when you're being dramatic, when you're doing all the speakery things that don't really resonate with people as much anymore? Why is that, Sally? You got it. Yeah. You know, I work with speakers of all different stripes. And the truth is one of the universal uh, things that I hear from them again and again is they don't consider themselves a speaker, even though they speak. So especially thought leaders, especially people who want to bring a TEDx like talk to the world, they're like, I'm, you know, I have an expertise about something, but I'm not a speaker. And so I actually feel like there's a really essential place for thought leaders in the speaking world. And, you know, TEDx and TED and all of those different platforms have really elevated the possibilities of what we can do with this platform. And I'm obviously a big believer in the power of it. But we are different kinds of speakers. We're not the professional speakers, even though eventually some of us might end up going that route Mm -hmm. and you get paid for speaking. And that's a wonderful thing. But there is sort of the speaker type that just doesn't resonate with us right? That's incredibly polished, that is uh, perfect, that there's a disconnect, that it is kind of the same old spiel again and again. And honestly, that doesn't move audiences. I'm not interested in that. I don't want more of that in the world. And so I wanted to bring out this idea that there's a new kind of speaker, and I call them an unspeaker. And, And we are all, I think it's accessible to all of us to be able to be fully present, bring our stories out into the world and connect with an audience in a real and authentic and powerful way. And so uh, that's what I wanted to bring out, this idea that that we can all be unspeakers. And in fact, the world needs us to be that way. I think that's really clear branding, frankly, and messaging from your end, Sally, because why not hit that thing right on the head and say, I'm, I'm an unspeaker. Yeah. <laughs> that goes right. <laughs> huh? You know, and and almost like the dog looking at you sideways a little bit. Be an unspeaker. I've heard it said that, uh, I mean, there there are really two kinds of experts. There's the traditional ivory tower, siloed, smart, you know, super smart, unapproachable expert. And then there's the kind of expert that is all of those things, except they're approachable. They're transparent, they're candid, they're authentic. And the new leaders and the new experts are going to be the ones that don't just have the hard skills, but they're approachable. They have that soft skill ability to connect. Have you noticed the same thing? Absolutely. And and I want to add to that. They're very Mm -hmm. um, idea forward people, right? So they're idea driven people. So I'm working with a lot of corporate clients right now that based on this branded talk phenomenon that's happened over the last decade or so realize that if they want to move their audience, they need to be idea forward and uh, get their values out into the world through a talk. And so they're bringing me in to help them pull together 
what you and I might call like a signature talk or a TEDx like mm-hmm. talk that is idea forward because they understand how powerful the platform is and how um, the their audiences aren't interested anymore on uh, exactly what we know they're interested in our experience, what it means, the value it brings. And that's what these TEDx like talks are all about. Yeah, well, absolutely. And uh, I, I, can you speak to that person who is, you know, the, the, the premise, I'll, I'll back up, the premise of what Chris Anderson put together with, with TEDx is that every single person on the planet has an idea worth spreading. Some of the people who have the most profound ideas are they, they're profound because they're so almost insignificant sounding, almost everyday, almost mundane, but there's this authentic spin on it. Yeah. Could you kind of walk me through that? Because I'm talking to some people right now, getting that question all over the place, and everybody wants to know, can I really spread an idea from whatever kind of a branded stage? What do you do to work with somebody exactly like that, Sally? Well, that's exactly what my talk is actually about is to really encourage people to that they are an unspeaker. You can be an unspeaker. And I'm one of those people who believes that everybody has a TEDx talk in them or a branded talk in them. I just believe it to my core because our experiences, if we can, and this is what thought leaders do, of course, is to articulate a specific point of view. And it's based on observation and insight and expertise and, and, you know, bringing the synopsis of all of that together and saying something new about what might be ordinary, right? And so there is this beautiful um, potential in everybody to do that. Now, I will say, I think there's a lot of TEDx branded talks out there that are not living up to the possibility and capacity of this platform because it's all here Mm -hmm. and no thank you right they're they're just relying on their expertise and what they know Mm -hmm. you know just as an audience member thanks for teaching me something but i don't care you know i don't know why it matters i don't know what the possibility is like talk universe i'm i'm breaking in on this because talk universe we're talking to you right now Okay, you're an expert, you know your stuff, but knowing isn't enough. So I want to kind of interrupt very rudely and let (laughs) Sally go in even giving you permission, Sally, go in even uh, even more brutally to to kind of attack that old. Really, it's it's almost an entitlement or a resting on your laurels view instead of coming to a branded stage like a TED or a TEDx or a Q or Idea City or whatever it is, short form idea centric uh talks out there going approaching to it what can i give how can i contribute as opposed to just unloading what you know so so let us have it and and the truth is nathan i think a lot of what gets in the way for people in this process is a lot of fear about what do i really have to offer can i impact an audience i'm not a speaker I'm an expert in this. And so a lot of my job is transforming that mindset and really changing people's approach on this. And that if we want to move our audiences, if we want them to care about what we're saying, if we want it to have an impact, then we have to really show up, you know, to kind of carry, you know, on top of what Rob was saying, like we can't just memorize some perfect words and say them out loud and expect it to have an impact. Like there's a whole different level of presence that has to come of really, really showing up in terms of the process, like how you prepare yourself and and get ready for this kind of thing. And then, of course, the level of risk that you're willing to take in the moment to really be there. And and uh, it's live theater, you know, like (laughs) it's video. Right. That's the viral part. That's the part that. we can't forget about because there's great potential there. But as a speaker, when you are in the room, there is something magical that can happen if you really show up and if you really connect and if that's what the focus is. And if not, then you're missing out on a huge opportunity. Um, And most people, honestly, I think just shut down in that moment because it's scary and it is a lot safer to just go up in your head and the script is running Mm -hmm. through your head 
and you're, and you play it small and you play it safe. And I, I totally get it. It's an incredibly vulnerable thing to do to speak. And I honor anybody who steps out on that stage and goes for it. Uh, but I just think there's so much more we can do with those moments. And so that is my passion. And that is what I love to do. Just draw people out of that and draw them to the edges of what is Mm. possible for them and the edges of themselves, because that is where the intriguing, powerful stuff happens. That is real. That's authenticity. And that is, that's vulnerability in life. And, and not only does it make, it more interesting and more dramatic and like intriguing for the audience, but that can be really transformative for the speaker herself or himself. Like there's uh, something really powerful that can happen when we show up in those moments in a way that we didn't think we could. Well, we've been enjoying this talk with the unspeaker, Sally Zimney. Her talk is called not a speaker, be an unspeaker. And uh, there's a lot more where that came from. We are going to pivot over to you in just a moment. Talk Universe for the Blitz Round. People ask, how could I start a seven-day-a-week podcast? It's because of what I've learned from my mentors. Some of the best mentors in history aren't around anymore. They've left hours of one-on-one mentoring behind in their books. Each month at Classics on Tap, I record a new chapter from a classic business book to help you make a difference. Download your first chapter at ClassicsOnTap.com. And we're back with Sally Zimney. It is time for the Blitz Round. We're going to talk about you, Talk Universe. We're going to talk about you because we're going to investigate through a series of either-or questions Sally's journey to the stage. Sally, are you ready? I'm ready. All right. Well, first... Were you invited to speak or did you apply? I applied. Wow. Just like the rest of us. Awesome. Yep. Are you a memorizer, improviser, or a blender? Mm. So here's what I'm going to say about this, Nathan. <laughs> Memorizing is for the birds. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Rob is exactly right when he was talking about um, what I call integration. So that's what we're going for. We're mm-hmm. going for something much deeper than memorization. You have to put in a lot of time. You cannot uh, wing this thing. And I know most people don't wing it, but they don't spend as much time as they need to. Integration is not just knowing the words. It's feeling the words. It is in your body. You know it so well that as Rob was saying, you can be doing something else at the same time. And it is already in you. That level of integration is the only way you're going to be able to be fully present, connect with what you're saying and connect with your audience. So in terms of connection, you walk out on stage, Sally, were you nervous? Were you in the zone? Neither or both? Uh, I think both. I was really nervous, which was a great meta experience Mm -hmm. for me to have as a presentation coach to put myself in the kind of experience that feels high stakes enough that you're like, whoo, big stuff is happening here. And that is why I started my talk with the internal thoughts that go through so many of our heads before we step out on stage, which is, oh my gosh, what are they going to think about this? How is this going to go? What if I screw up? Um, And because that's real. And honestly, that is true for every speaker I've ever worked with, regardless of how experienced they are, how new they are to this, that internal monologue is something we have to manage and handle and it's in its present. And so shifting uh, our approach from, and you were talking about this before, shifting our approach from, oh my gosh, I'm, uh, I'm nervous to, I am so excited. Mm-hmm. This is going to be great. I can't wait to show this to them. That level of energy and excitement and joy is going to come out and your adrenaline will mm. taper off. You got to just give yourself a few minutes and hang in there. And that's why really nailing your beginning and practicing it a lot will help you because you, it may take you a while to really settle in and be in the moment and be in the room. Sally, what's a tip tool or technique that helped you? So uh, I've been talking a little bit about process and rehearsal. And so uh, most of the people I talk with don't rehearse enough on their feet. Mm -hmm. And so the biggest tip 
uh, I can give any of you out there who are, you know, on the journey of giving a branded talk like this is to get on your feet before you're ready when you are rehearsing. Mm -hmm. So don't spend, you know, it's really safe zone is, is, uh, perfecting your content and your slides. And that's a really safe place to live. And we can get really obsessed with that. When you're at about 80% done with your content, that's when I want you to start getting up on your feet and rehearsing on your feet. Hmm. Excellent. So you learn so much on your feet that you will never learn until mm -hmm. you get on your feet. And so you want to learn it sooner rather than later. Cut for time question. What was the most painful part of your talk that you had to cut out? Ooh, the end. Mm. It's just the end. It, it still, it was too long. And we're looking back on it now. I'm like, no, nah, I didn't, I didn't love my ending, but that's the part where we just, the, we just want to jam so much in. There's mm -hmm. so much we want to say and just cut for time, get to the point, short and sweet end. We've been enjoying the Blitz Round with Sally Zimney. If you want to check out her talk, not a speaker, be an unspeaker, you can go to our show notes page at bethetalk.com. We will have a clickable link to the talk as well as Sally's website, thismovedme.com. Thismovedme.com. You'll be able to connect with her, find out all of her additional insights that we didn't even have time to unpack here today. However, we're coming back to Sally in just a moment for the final word of advice. Everyone wants to change the world, but not everyone knows the first step. Before you can change the world with your talk, it has to be selected. So grab the templates, timelines, and tools that I use to get my talk selected at bethetalk.com. And we're back with Sally Zimney. It's time for the final word of advice for Talk Universe. My final word of advice for you unspeakers out there in talk land is to let go of the idea of perfection. That if, if something goes wrong, if things don't go exactly how you imagine them to, that could be a beautiful moment of presentation gold because it's real. And so to really show up in the moment, to embrace the live theater aspect of it, love up the people in your room and let go of that idea of perfection. If you can do that, some beautiful things could happen. Well, Sally Zimney, thank you so much for carving out time to be on the talk today and sharing your wisdom with Talk Universe. Thank you. It was a joy to be here, Nathan. I love what you're doing. Thanks for listening to Be The Talk. For tips and resources to help you change the world, go to bethetalk.com. See you tomorrow.